Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the King Dave's podcast. And today on the pod, we have with us the man, the myth, and the legend, a man I love to call Delwyn James. Uh, but he's known, popularly known on social media as Mr. Fixer. He's a man with, you know, a million, <laughs> a million names and a million portfolios. So, uh, kindly introduce yourself uh, to us, uh, Delwyn James. Uh, who is Delwyn James? Who are you? And who do you think you are as a person? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ademola. Oh, it's nice to be here with you. So my real name is Ayodeji Ibituye. Uh, I was born into a family of five. Um, I was born in Ocean State, Nigeria. And... Um, so far so good i currently live in the united kingdom with my family uh, bristol to be precise so i am a digital marketer a ceo and a businessman and i also do coaching and mentorship for people and my major is actually business and marketing i have msc in digital marketing from the university of the west of England here in Bristol also. And so far so good. We established our new agency here in Bristol also, looking to expand out very soon. Wow, interesting. Uh thank you very much for coming on board. You know, I know you so many things, but anytime I want to make a summary of you, what I just refer to you is uh, a great man. And uh interesting greatness comes with like a lot of challenges right so i know for me my earliest uh, memory of you was you know meeting you back in uh, my university days but before we circle back to the university days right i would like for you to uh tell us about how growing up was for you you know from your earliest memory of yourself you know up till when you got into um OAU. so um what would you say about that uh, I grew up in a very humble environment. Um, growing up was really challenging, but I bless God. God, God has been faithful. You know, I, I came from a household where eating rice happens only on a, on Christmas Day. Wow. Uh, it came from from a, from from a household. Uh, I probably tasted chicken four times before the age of twelve. It, it is that, or it was that terrible, or should I say, amazing? No humble was, beginnings. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's it, 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 growing up was quite challenging. My parents they tried so much to give me that uh, proper education, they couldn't even afford it at some point. They had to withdraw me from a private school. And I went to, I was taken to a public school where I was tested and I was told that I shouldn't be in primary three. And I was just dropped in primary four, Mm -hmm. like automatic promotion with the hope that, okay, I should be able to do well in primary four. At the end of the term, I, I came first in class. It wow. wasn't as if I was that intelligent. It was because of the environment I found myself among children who doesn't see education as something that serious. It was a public school for crying out loud. You know, and after a year, I returned back to a private school where I had to return back to my normal class. And, you know, after my primary school, I continued to Federal Government College, Ikiru, in Osho State. I went to a boarding school, and I did that for about three years before my parents could no longer finance my education, and I had to return back to another public school to finish my senior secondary school. Oh, it has always been, it has been a mixed feeling, you know, it's like this moment, you're thriving, the next one, 
There's no money to even survive. I, I learned how to also at a very young age. At the age of 12, I started selling what we call Kuli Kuli. <laughs> Back then, I, I sell Okrika That's shoes. I, 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 I sold I sold so many things. Then that, that was the time I started selling Christian stickers. You know, I sell stickers to people. I go door to door after school to sell stickers to families to put at their door, you know. For example, I sell stickers, popular stickers that say that this house belongs to Jesus. <laughs> uh, you know, people like to buy things like that. So at, at a very young age, I understood what marketing is because, you know, when I started, it was a friend of mine that actually loaned me the money to start the sticker business. And I got the stickers, but it wasn't moving. So I figured out that, okay, which of these stickers sold well? Then I, I realized that people love something that prophesy financial breakthrough. People love something that justify or that makes them feel safe. Like, oh, this uh, this house is covered by the blood of Jesus. Satan, yeah, no, no, uh, no entry for you. So, so, I, sorry I to interrupt you. you. Sorry to interrupt you. I think this actually speaks to one of my major philosophies that I, I love to tell my you know fellow finance people. Right, you do not sell what you want to sell. You sell what the market wants to buy, and <laughs> that, that exactly speaks to, to that of philosophy. Course. Yeah. So that, that 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 was it, though. That that's just the summary of how I grew up. So. A lot of people now, they just see the success. They look at me and they say, oh, I want to be like Mr. Fixer. Oh, Joe, come on, do this for us. But they don't actually know that the old oh, Mr. Fixer started at a very young age, even though I, 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 I didn't know or I never realized that what I was doing then was marketing, was sales. I just thought I was just being or trying to survive. I remember back in my boarding school days, I was literally like one of the few students that attended a boarding house and I don't get pocket money. My parents tells me, or they told me then, you are going to school, you are going to a boarding house where you will be fed three times in a day. So what do you need pocket money for? So anytime I'm hungry, I remember one very day, it was quite, a, it was an emotional day for me. I was so hungry, nothing to eat. I don't have any provision. And I went inside the bush. I saw a palm kernel tree or a palm tree. I saw palm kernel. I packed so many of, of, of it. And I, I looked for a big stone and a smaller stone and I started breaking them open. I hit until I was full inside the bush alone wow. and you know so we well, bless god it's been that, it's been a, a long time that's a lot of hatching but then you know um diamonds are actually made out of pressure right uh mm -hmm. would you say that the hardships that you faced while you were younger have had a very big impact in shaping who you have become today would you, would you say that? Of course. You know, I, I usually say this. If you're not chasing something, something must be chasing you definitely. A lot of people in our society now, they are a reflection of their past experience. If you've suffered, I am talking about real suffer, and I happen to be someone that loved the good things of life. At a very young age, I can't just explain where the whole need for luxury came from. I've never experienced luxury before. I've never enjoyed luxury before. But I am the type of person that I love my anything I have. I love it to be different. I love it to be unique, even though I could not afford it. So that forced my brain into thinking about different ways 
I could have gained access to this lifestyle. And that in itself was really helpful. When I was in my boarding school, before going to boarding house, I, my mom, you know, she handed me over to a cobbler, a shoemaker, who taught me how to make shoes and how to repair them. And in my boarding house, my boarding, boarding day school era, I was actually doing that for people and I was making good money. She also taught me how to make hair, women's hair. Wow. And on Friday, when we, are, we have our social night, our, senior, our seniors, SS2, SS3 seniors, some of them want to have Bob Marley for you know, social night. Some of them want to have Little Braid and all. And I do that for them. I plated their hair. I did Bob Marley. I did different hairstyle for them. And they pay me very well. I'm, I mean very, very well. Wow. I was talking about... <laughs> you seem to know how to do a lot of things, right? Yeah. And that makes me think, is that the reason why you got the name Mr. Fixer? Like, how did that name come about? <laughs> Actually, the name the uh, Mr. Fixer or the Fixer, the way it came was quite strange it was given to me by two different people at two different times within a space of one week i i was doing my it that time industrial training in oau and my boss who usually traveled away from a battle to see me in um on site where I, I was working actually gave me a task to 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 to, to complete and Having completed the task, he asked about a particular thing and he asked that, how are we going to do it? And I told him, don't worry about that. I will find a way to solve it. And he said, I really like you. I've never heard you say no to anything that no, this thing cannot work. You are always finding a way to fix things. You, sh you should be called Mr. Fair, the fixer. That was the first time. That same week, I traveled back home to Shobo. And I went to my sister's salon. And I saw her packing different things from her store. And she was like, then she saw this, this CD. And she was like, oh, my God. This was the CD, the, 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 my first training ever. She recorded it on CD. So the thing was now really rough. And she was like, oh, my God. I wish I can preserve the memory of this. I asked her to give me the CD. She gave me the CD and I was like, you know what? I'll find a way to make this work. She was like, ah, ah, eh, why, eh, why? I just like you. Ah, you just have a way of just making everything work. Ah, you are the confirmed fixer. You know, and I was like, my boss fixer mentioned this again. thing. Fixer again. <laughs> a few days ago, my sister is also mentioning it today. You know what? If I ever want to have a brand, that's you know that and that, that should be like 2007 that wow. takes care of things like this i'm going to go with the name the fixer and the name ghost talk and a lot of doors has opened for me because of that name some people they will just hear my name for the first time I and mean, they they will be kind of curious that what do you fix that's the question many people ask me like what do you fix and i'll be like anything you want to fix you know of course i majored in marketing but I've actually done a lot of things. I've made a lot of money from things that I, I did not even figure out that I could have made money from. Take, for example, I remember the first property I sold in Nigeria. I did not even tell the person I'm into real estate. The person just said, oh, you're a marketer, blah, 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 blah. I want to give you this property. Sell it for me. I'll be like, okay. Then I, I sold it within four days. Mr. Fix. And that's that's, <laughs> that's one of the interesting names I really know you by. But then, speaking of fixing things, right? I'm going to circle back to 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 the world of business, right? Uh, how did you fix yourself into OAU, and how did you fix you know uh, life uh, for yourself in OAU? Because I uh, I remember that's basically my LS member review, and then I remember you used to say like a lot of things that 
you know, I just speak snippets like oh, this. This guy is quite inspiring, you know. Like you gave me that idea that oh, I'm somebody from a humble background, and I'm very sure of the kind of bright future that I have ahead of me. Like that was the idea I always had of you, and in my head, I was like, this guy will go places. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, I I, 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 I completed you. my I completed my uh, O N D in 20, 2007 and i was supposed to i wanted to go to oau so i did direct entry to oau when when i got to oau i had two challenges number one university life was completely or is completely different from what we had in polytechnic Interesting. So, Sorry, what exactly did you study in OU? Like, I've never asked you, but I, I went to the same uni with you, but I did not even know what you studied. I just knew okay. this guy. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, I, I, I read uh, quantity surveying. Oh, wow. That's what I, yeah. I was in ETM, environmental department. So, so you know, we were always moving around with the T square and the board, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So w- w- when I when I was in OAU, life was quite challenging because, just like I said during my ND days at Federal Polytechnic, I did, I, I did business. I sold fish. People call me. People know me as Baba Ledger in wow. uh, Federal Polytechnic, day, especially the lecturers and non-teaching staff. They call me Baba Ledger. I sold dry fish or true. That was what I used to train myself. Then and also I am extremely brilliant. I actually finished I I I, I scored completely on scholarship while in OE. Wow. I was on yes, I was on scholarship. So I realized oh more this OEU life is different though. I need to be serious if I want to make it out of this place. Because my first semester result was really poor. I was like, eh, I don't want to lose my scholarship. One, number two. I need to know what I am doing if I want to, you know, have a good life. Because my parents has always made me, you know, uh, understood that in order for you to succeed in life, education is important. Even though I have a different mindset now, education is not important for you to succeed in life. You just need sense and you need to have a plan for your life. As you can succeed. <laughs> Say a man, says a man with very good education. Says a man yeah. who's highly educated with a master's. <laughs> so no, no, no. <laughs> I was telling I was telling somebody, you know, um, was it yesterday? I'm like, oh, you can say money's not everything in life, but you need to make money first before you earn the right to say it. So I think you have earned the right to say education is also important because yeah. you have profit, right? well, yes, I can say that you are well, you can say that. So at OAU, I did a few things. Actually, I, I didn't do any business in OAU, but I I did more of services. I I used to skate a lot and I dance. So people pay me, you know, we go for dance shows, we get money from there. And I also, I used to skate, inline skating. I don't know if you've ever seen me skating back in OAU. I skate a whole lot. He, he yeah, did, it was I, dancing, you know. I I remembered because you know, yeah, like, oh, this guy, this guy is a dancer. I was like, interesting, uh, interesting. We, we actually were in OEU at the same time with a lot of you know entertainers that are like making waves right now. The yeah, like the likes of Black Bones, the likes of Chinko. Mm-hmm. Did you? I know Black mm-hmm. was a dancer in OEU. Did you ever have any gig with him? No, no, no. Uh, actually, the crew that I belonged, um, but then I used to uh, dance with Chubsy. I used to dance with this guy. He's, he's, he's late now. Uh, I used to, I, we had a very strong crew. We even went for Malta Guinness dance, uh, family dance, uh, sorry, Malta Guinness competition yeah. twice. Wow. Uh, the first one we went, we were disqualified at the normal grand. Why the second one we 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 were disqualified at the semi-final stage. So oh, wow. that's, that's some yeah. interesting stuff. <laughs> so yeah, you took that really, really far. Yeah, yeah. And I also did uh this Morta Guinness Campus Tour team. Martina Campus Tour team. I won it. I won that. 
once. Uh, during that Nescafe show, I yeah, I dance. did. I remember Nescafe. I, I danced, but the I talent dance. thing. I I I I I I got the skating gig. I was the one that got the skating gig. But God was really good to me uh, at OAU because during my CWS slash IT, I was able to you know secure a lot of connection. I have mother's connection at OAU till date. Mother's connection with even up to VC level. Um, we we ran paro together. I don't want to talk about that. So, <laughs> Mother's connection. So when 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 Nuga game came, I got a contract with Access Bank. I was the one that got the whole of Nuga contract at OAU. So I did the whole banner, the whole billboards, the whole flyer, the whole everything. So I made mother's money for the first time in my life. So wow. I saw millions. In my life that the first time. Guy. <laughs> yeah. So. That's and also when we did the swimming pool construction, you know, I I I I made a lot of money from that too. So I think I've just been the this kind of guy because I'm hardworking because I'm always that go getter guy kind of a person. Life has a way of working for me. So you know, I can't say I'm lucky. I'm not lucky. I I I You're blessed I work really hard for. <laughs> everything I've gotten in my life. If I take, for example, the, the man that connected me to the Access Bank gig, he saw me working on site one day. He saw my glasses and I was like, oh, I love your glasses. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, yeah, I got here on campus. Really? So it, he asked me to take him there. I took him there. And he was able to get his own glasses. Why bring me back on site? It was like, ah, Man, I really like your pushover, but this one that you speak so well. What what do you do? I said, ah, I'm a student now. <laughs> was I really? Ah, man, I thought you're a liberal on that side. <laughs> imagine, wow. imagine how I looked for someone to think I I was a liberal, not even a student. Even though I, I, I was a student back then, but what I'm just trying to say is, so at one point, the man just came and was like, oh, there's this thing. I don't know if it's something you can undo. You know, Access Bank is going to be the one to host Nuga games. And I feel like this is something you can do. And, you know, he gave me that opportunity and I took it well and I did not misbehave. I, I, I consulted the right people. I did what I was supposed to do. I submitted the right quotation, got the gig. From there too, I was able to get other gigs. I got the gig with, for Super Sports too. I was the one that erected all the stand, all those strong, strong stand that Super Sport used for their shooting, their coverage. I did everything. Wow. Then, thinking about the whole thing. And at that, at that point in your life, thing. it was a really big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal. I remember then this um, BlackBerry Z or Q, Q5 came out. Q5 or Q10, I can't remember the name. I got a phone today. I traveled home today. My mom said she liked the phone. I gave her the phone today. I got back to Ife the next day. I got another phone the next day. I climbed this badminton court at OAU. Badminton court to erect the, the billboard at, on top of that huge court, the pavilion. And I forgot the phone there. Wow, no way. <laughs> No way. I remember just like yesterday, they removed the whole scaffold. The scaffold was driving off the campus, and I remembered my phone. Was, someone was calling the phone. I was hearing the phone ring up there. there. There was no way for me to get back up unless I rent another scaffold. I was just too busy. My boss was calling me. I was trying to do the company job. I was trying to do my own job. I had to get another phone that same day. So I had so much money that I did not even know what to use the money for. I could not tell anybody how much I was what, but I had millions. But I could not share student. with anybody <laughs> because this is this was me. I, I, I had as at that time, I've never had my own fifty thousand naira, and all of a sudden I became a millionaire overnight. Wow! Just so would you boom. would you say that was your first major breakthrough? Because um, yes. For everybody, there's that one contract, one job, you know, one gig that just gives you a major breakthrough and makes you believe in yourself. Would you say that 
that also, you know, made you take yourself more seriously? And actually, um, no and yes. And I'm going to simplify it. When I, all the money I made from Noga, Super Sports, yes. And then DT wanted to give me the same contract. But someone, an elderly person, advised me not to do that because it would be a kind of bridge. I was already working with Access Bank. It would be a conflict of interest. GT wanted to hijack me to get the show, you know. So someone advised me that, no, no, don't do that. They are competitors. They don't want to work with this and work with that. It's going to ruin your reputation. And I was glad I didn't do that because at the end of the whole competition, Access Bank... The, the, there was this independent job. Access Bank just required me to execute. It wasn't mine. Access Bank funded it. They just hired me as the muzzle to do the job. And at the end of the job, Access Bank told me to take every material. You get it. So the no, the, the no part of the answer is because I didn't learn how to use my money wisely. I squandered everything I got for that. So, exactly. You know, there, 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 this That's the next thing about my man. I was like, oh, you're able to manage the yeah. whole situation. Yeah, there's, there, there's <laughs> this Yoruba adage that says, the English interpretation is, whatever money a young man gets first, is he's just going to use it to satisfy himself. He's not going to spend it wisely. So I, I, I squandered the money just anyhow. But where I got clarity was still during that period. What happened was my boss got a contract to fix the sport complex, the whole floor of that sport complex. If you remember that indoor gym, I do my, remember. Boss, Very my boss told me to do the quotation. I did the quotation and the job was around $3 million. And my boss said, and I quote, this job is beneath me. You have learned enough on the job. Ayodiji, I give you this job. Go and do everything. Hmm. So he gave me that job. And that was the first time in my life I started seeing myself differently. I started perceiving myself like you're a person of value. Yeah, there's always Someone that just, There's always yes, that your like, boss. Your yourself boss, more seriously. Yeah. You know, I see, I, I, I see my boss like, gold. when will I ever get to this stage? My boss loves luxury vehicles. He owns 14 luxury vehicles. 14 luxury vehicles. I'm not talking about vehicles of 34 million as at that time. He owns 14 of them. His least vehicle happens to be Lexus RX 330. As at then, <laughs> so I was like, for this man to trust you to do this job, you know what? You need to start taking yourself more seriously. So I did that job. You know the way federal government job happens now. You use your money to do it, then they'll pay you after like three to six months. You, as a matter of fact, you'll be chasing them to collect your money. So when the money for that job came, it was really important to me, even though I've seen more with Access Bank and Super Spot job. I've squandered those ones, right? All right, like, okay. <laughs> this the, 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 I guess the, it came the, out the twenty thousand feels like twenty million to you. Yes, you get it. So now I I, I was able to appreciate the, the the money, the profit from that job was less than two million naira. To be honest with you. And the reason why I was even able to get that much profit happened because my boss told me, whatever thing you need for this job, call the office at Ibadan. They will bring any equipment or any staff for you. But I won't, I, I dash you. So I fixed the doors to this badminton court, the lawn tennis court, uh, sorry, the indoor lawn tennis court and the indoor gym. I fixed the door. I fixed the floor. I did the old maintenance, repainted, changed some windows. Ah, man. Every time I think, look look back and I remember that building, it gives me this, this vibe of, damn, you 
own this project. You did this, this project. Is, this is my hard work. You this is my. Um, it's not as if they put me there and say, uh, you know, I was an IT student that time. Not, not go, go look after this. It is, it is your job. Anything you do, you do. If you spoil it, mm -hmm. if you do it well, mm -hmm. I was able to do it well. I got the money and I treated that money very well. That was when I had my first fixed deposit in my life. I I fixed nine hundred thousand out of that money because i was like i sat down and i asked myself what did you use almost six million to do i can't say this is that me okay i got a car that was the only sensible thing <laughs> i got a car but the rest so i was going to old market i wasn't of that place on campus the new, book car. <laughs> new book car new book car eat enjoy myself carry girls enjoy myself <laughs> it, 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 I, I, I could I, I wasn't drinking. I don't smoke. It's just food, 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 drink, 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 nice drink and all. So it, well, bless God. So that was that, that that's it. Nice, nice, nice. So life in life in OE was really fantastic for you, you know. Yes. And then you know, yes. heading heading yes. into yes. business that is, you know, apparently in OAU, you are established that platform for yourself to be known as the fixer, to be known as uh, a business person. You already knew what you wanted to do in life, you know. Um, a lot of people mm -hmm. who went to uni with us, right, I think probably it was in their final year, they started thinking about, okay, what do I want to do with my what life? What do I want to do, yeah. And it's uh, it's quite uh, unfortunate sometimes. Uh, for for me, for example, I think it was in the third year I knew that okay, I want to I want to practice as a chartered accountant because I had you know, th there was a time we had uh, what's it called a long strike, right? And then I was with the firm of chartered accountants. I knew that okay, I would like to do this. I'd like to explore this. It gets you respect in life and you know earns you some some money as well, right? But uh, you had established that platform for yourself. And I remember we had, um, I don't know if you were in my set or you were in a set above mine. You finished 2015 or 20, 2015? I've been in my set. So we even had to like wait quite a while for NYSC. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it happened. Yes, it happened at all, right? So thing is, from there, from, you know, leaving OU, like, what kind of business, how did you not establish yourself in business? Because I remember meeting you again in Abuja because it seems like your life and my life have kind of been intertwined, sort yeah. of. I saw you in OAU, I saw you in Abuja, in the United Kingdom. I still saw you again. I was like, what? <laughs> There's something with this guy. <laughs> okay, there is uh, okay. with this guy. <laughs> I cannot Don't, understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God works in in you know mysterious way. Uh, I I have always believed that there's a reason behind our path always crossing. Mm, interesting. And I I even know for sure that that purpose is not yet established finally. Wow. Because you know sometimes. God can send you guardian angels in form of a man. And just one word, just one word is all you need to hold on to. A friend of mine I met here in England a few weeks ago called me at night and he told me something. He said, you changed my life completely. And I was like, how did I change your life? The first time I met him, the first day we, we got to see face to face, he, he, he just got a car. We've been talking. He said he needed a car, you know, and it was like he borrowed the entire money, borrowed small money from his wife, borrowed small money from his friend, and he was able to get a car. He got a car for 1,200 pounds. You know, of course, you know, cars they are quite affordable yeah got a, a used car 1200 and we met and i asked him a question that day i said you've been in england for two years and you could not raise 1002 from your own pocket you had to borrow from a b c i said five years from now 
What do you want to say you, were, you have achieved living in England? And he could not answer me. He said he left me that night. That that question seems like I carried a huge rock and I landed it on his head. <laughs> that he started thinking about his life that who is this guy? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I get you. That's what our Yoruba people call Ukoro. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like he hits, he, he gave him words that are like a rock, and yeah, you know, yeah, he like hits hard and like I'm just seeing check. this guy, I'm just seeing this guy face to face today, 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 and this guy has has already put some words into my life, and you know, he said he, he wasn't comfortable with his life anymore. It was like if I am if if I am not careful. This is how my life will continue to be for the next five years, as this guy has asked me. And that one day I will wake up, ask myself this same question he has challenged me with, and I won't be able to say any major thing. So you exactly. see, you're listening to that, that, after, that person to give us that reality check. But for you, you where was that reality check for you? <laughs> well, the, 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 the reality check has always been uh, my background. I there, there 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 is this phrase I usually say that I've stopped saying. I used to say one thing that I don't ever want to turn out like my father. Oh, wow! Yeah, exactly. I was uh, on my notes. I was actually good <laughs> going towards that right because I, I remember from some conversations with you, you. You tell me about your parental influences, right? And then, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this this man, you know must have gone through certain things that actually are motivating him. I was, I was telling a friend um, recently, um, yeah, this friend is not Nigerian, and I think they are from South Africa, and they were asking me about how life growing up in Nigeria is, right? And, you know, how like the elders influence us in our ways. And then I told, I told this person this, right? That in Nigeria, we tend to have um, parents that will tell you these are the good elders, these are the bad elders, right? They'll tell you these ones, you know, try to act like them, try to, you know, be like them. These ones, they're highly educated, right? Try to be educated so that you can be like Mr. A, Mr. B, right? And they tell you, take your education very seriously, right? So that you don't end up like Mr. X, Y, Z. Y, Z. And then, that actually gives you a mentality shift. It does something to your psyche as a person, to your mindset, right? That is, you see certain examples, right? And you say, I don't want to end up like this. Because children observe. Children learn a lot by observing. And when they look at certain examples, they see character flaws, right not like oh this person is probably entirely a bad person right but then you learn from the failures of certain people who have been ahead of you and say i do not want to end up like this and then you also observe some people that you know achieve certain things that you want to achieve right and then say okay i want to tread this particular footsteps right and it says as a motivation to you so for, for me personally right i saw certain bad examples growing up and it was more like a childhood trauma for me as a person that is to say i do not want to end up like this kind of people and it keeps me pushing harder than i should <laughs> regularly push <laughs> as a person just because i do not want to end up like that so i don't okay. know you, you you can you can shed more light on that <laughs> yeah so 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 so, so. You know, I've heard a lot of stories about my dad and my mom. And like I told you, at a very young age, I've always loved the good things of life. So I started asking myself some questions. Why are we like this? Why are, are we living like this? My mm. parents, they are both educated. My mom went to OEU. Mm. My dad happens to be the first Akewi in the whole of Ondo State. My dad happens to be the first councillor in my, my local government, the whole or your state, now Osho state. 
No, they've always, they, my dad especially, pioneered a lot of good stuff. So I'm like, how did it turn out to be the way it is? Why is it not successful financially? Then I started, you know, I'm a thinker. I don't read. I'm a thinker. I can think anything. And I can even think my way to prosperity. I know how to think a lot. I started Imagine thinking about... By Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever read you that know, book? I, I, <laughs> yeah, I read the, that book 11 times. 11 wow. strong. I mean, that, that book was one of my very early, you know, childhood yeah. influences. My father gave me that book to read. And yes. It, 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 so... So, so I, I realized that there are some mistakes my dad made, right? Also, uh, Think and Grow Rich also gave me some clarity to understand my father Robert more. Kiyosaki. Yeah, 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 yeah. Robert. Yeah. I realized yeah. that, okay, there's... Rich Dad, Poor yeah. Dad. Yeah, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Poor Dad, yeah. Dad, yeah, Dad. There, 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 there were some mistakes my dad made. Also, he's a single loner. He doesn't have friends. So I, I was able to realize that, okay, if you don't have friends, if you are rich and you fall, which means you don't have impact in anybody's life, how can you get back up? No way. Even if you are not rich, but you bring something to the table, like support, you know, being there for your friends when they need you. Take, for example, let's say you are rich. I am not rich. You, you, are, you have an event. I'm there to support. Oh, uh, after Iron, I've quickly gone to the right places. Oh, these are the prizes. This is this. You transfer money to me or you've given me cash. Bam. I don't ship the meat, enter compound, tie them for one corner. You know, you're like, oh, when next you are having a get together, you know that I can rely on AY because. He knows all these, uh, let's go and get meat, let's go and shop for ram, let's go and shop for goat thing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So if I ever have meat, you won't just push me away because you know that this guy is useful in a way. Uh, that, uh, uh, when my grandma died, when we were doing my grandma's burial, it was AY that took care of all of the old preparation. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's always essential to be a resourceful person. Yeah, be resourceful. Don't just be like, eh, because me, I don't have money. My friend has money. I should not be envious or I should not be looking for how to hurt you. No, rather, I should be closer to you, try to learn from you. And apart from learning from you, even though I don't have money to give you, we don't have any business transaction to run, but I should be able to put myself in a strategic position in your life that whenever you see my call, you won't be like, I beg, I will call him later. You will know that, okay, this guy has his own impact. And if you've noticed me carefully, if you've, if you've paid attention to me, you realize that I'm the kind of person that you cannot look at me anyhow. Because number one, the value I bring to the table from day one, even if I will not end up being your friend, getting to meet you for the first time, you will know for sure that this guy is sensible. Even though I may not be your friend, because I've met a lot of people that I learned this from the late Ubon King. He happens to be one of my mentors before COVID-19 took him away. You know, he, he taught us something. He said, you should, you should not be eager to bring people closer. When you meet people, you have four places to put them. He drew, he drew, he drew something like a plus sign. Okay, plus, a minus, project. multiplication, and addition. He okay. said... If someone comes into your life for the first time and you like how they are standing, take them to the plus part. Plus side. If you if you are meeting someone for the first time and the person sounds so annoying, they're just talking about bum bum, about sex, about shayu, about last night, how they enjoy themselves, put them in the subtraction immediately. <laughs> if that person should ever ask for a number, don't give it to them. Find a way to quickly change the subject. Now, that person you've added to addition. Then as time goes on, you realize that, okay, this person is someone you can actually engage with, maybe business-wise, spiritually, or career-wise. You put them in multiplication. That is, they are adding to your life. 
you multiply them. The value. But now, if that person that you feel like, oh, this person is someone that's sensible, turn out to be a casual friend, that, okay, there's nothing of value that this person can do for you. Of course, they are sensible, they are good. So they will be like you are putting them in a bank. So you subtract, you you divide them. Right. And say, you know what? I will have this person's contact. Once in a while, when I see this person's status, I will, ah, hey, Baba, just to be on the top of the mind, I will wear this. They are an acquaintance. But, yeah, like, hey, like an, 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 an acquaintance, but not a friend, friend, friend. So let's say something comes, where you can say, ah, I remember that, 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 very, very good. Ah, if you see the quality of this guy, talk to him. So Dada will now get someone to say, hello, are you Mr. Dada? The fixer told me to call you that you are good at this, 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 that your price is around 750 to a million for, for video shoot. Oh, we, we need a, a, a videographer in Manchester. Can you do it for us? Dada will see me as someone that is good. That, wow. Wow. So Mr. Fixer gave me a client. What has happened? Dada now you're into their emotional bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, you get now. Dada is now holding me one for the future. So there are a lot of things that in life we don't think about and we just do our thing. So for me, I was able to quickly decipher all of these things. I I, I knew what I wanted for my life. I usually say this to my wife that I've always known that I'll be very successful. I just didn't know when that it would be this early, to be very honest with you. And I also discovered one thing, one good thing. It is easier for an intelligent extrovert to make it in life than an intelligent introvert. The few people I have coached the few people I have coached that are extra fat like myself, they make it faster than the people I have coached that are intro fat. Because as an extra fat, yes, a lot of people are not going to like you, especially if you choose to be very vocal, especially you take advantage of places like social media. Every day I block people. I don't care. <laughs> Yes, almost every day I block people. And one thing about me is I've been able to understand the way social media works. So you have to, don't be on the side of the, the, the crowd. You want to be a little crazy with a touch of corporateness on social. So when I bring a viral topic and people are like, I don't like this, Mr. Fixer. Why do you always this? Why do you always that? Guess what? As the heat is going on, some people are already talking to me in the DM. Some people are already asking for my publicity. number. publicity. <laughs> yes, yeah. Some people are already asking for my number. Some people are already coming to say, ah, Mr. Fixer, I swear to God, it's like you know me. You are, I'm the one you are talking to. Why did you not just Kuku mention my name? Ah, I need your help in my life. Give me your account number. Let's talk. Let's do this. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, so after my NYSE, I, I knew for sure that, you know what, uh, number one, I, I wanted to go to the big city. I knew Lagos was not an option because during my project in OAU, I was told to go to Lagos, uh, Lagos State Secretariat for my uh, research and all. And I hated Lagos that time. Every day I was having serious headache at night. I said, no, 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 Lagos is not for me. There was a day, um, oh, it was your brother. There was a day I came to Lagos and I came for an interview at the... Uh, on the island, and Deroju and I left your place for a head. And wow. we got there, and we got to the venue eight thirty. Wow! And I was like, no, no, no! no. I don't said. want. Nah, this is. I don't <laughs> want this kind of. Life. Exactly, exactly, right? I you remember I told you I had an internship while we were in our third year in um in OAU. And then I had to wake up 4 a.m. all the time, you know, go to the island, right, from the mainland, mm-hmm. just to to get that um, work experience. I think from then I told myself, no way, this is not for me. And that was why I said to you in Abuja, so I can understand your pains, I feel your frustrations. And then, you so know, I chose Abuja, yeah, Abuja rather than Lagos. I, I saw you in Abuja, I was like, 
what, what, what's up with this guy? What's up? <laughs> so I chose Abuja. Um, why, while, I, while I was on the job I was doing in Abuja, you know, of course, I know that's another thing a lot of youths lack. They don't understand that even though you have a good dream, even though your dreams are valid, mm. you need to serve someone first. Not necessarily yes. someone in line. Important. Yeah, not, not necessarily someone in line of your dream, but sometimes you need that experience. You need that life work experience. Take for example, you you graduated, and from there you want to build something. You don't have the discipline. You've never woken up, dress up for work. You've never been shouted at for not meeting a deadline. You've never had a sleepless night to submit a deadline that is not an homework or assignment. The only dead night you, uh, sorry, the only late night you've done happens to be for your examination. So getting the ability to serve under someone gave me that hedge. I've worked in an establishment that a lot of people don't just like me for no reason, just because the CEO happens to just like me also for no reason. And they're like, what's up with this guy? Why is it different? Why is it that CEO? Let, let, let me share a beautiful story with you before we end this. Our CEO, the CEO of the company I work, has been in Nigeria for over 10 years and he has never tasted normal water except from Nestle. Nestle. He came from America and he said the only reason why he drinks, in fact, they use Nestle to cook for him. He said the only reason why he stick to that is if he should ever have an issue, health problem that is waterborne, he's going to sue them. Knowing fully well that it was next to he has been drinking all his life. Hmm. Again. Now, there was a day he sent me to the bank, told, told the driver to take me to the bank to go get some money. And on my way back to the office, I bought oranges and I was drinking. I got to the office and I was like, ah, hey, why? Or also. Is it sure do? Is this is this sweet? I said, ah, oh, just, uh, do. the driver also was like, Mr. Mr. Jimo, ah, what I do? He collected it from me, put it in his mouth, and everybody at the office looked at themselves like, you know why? Because it's good, my no. boss never eats outside. Wow. You if you give a guy gifts that is edible, he will tell you in his in your presence that. It, it does not take anything edible from people. And it was like, ah, so he do little. He asked the driver to take me back to the place and buy more for him. He only said one thing, Jimo, make sure pay you work for I know for bear here. Yeah? Like that is the knife used to cut the orange. Make sure you wash it yourself. Yes. Yeah. Our boss is that. I don't I don't know how to explain you, all these health conscious people. But the one he took from me, did I instruct the orange seller? To <laughs> That's some high level OCD. <laughs> you know, yeah, he really likes me. You know, when he's having meetings with, I met the former Jega, the former EFCC, this guy. I met him in his office. I met a lot of politicians with him. And, you know, I, I was a staff, but this guy, this guy, this man would be having meeting in his office and he would send for me, tell me to sit down. But that, for that no must have reason, a lot of jealousy for you. Yeah, so a lot of people hated me for no reason. And through my ways, and after after closing five o'clock, I'm going to stay back at work just to use the office computer, internet, and electricity to you know to quickly share small my <laughs> small marketing. That, work. That, that, that was in Abuja, right? Yeah, and one day. So how did you transition me. into business in, in Abuja? Yeah, because I, I remember I, 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 you you were into selling jeans at a point, yeah. and then you started the digital marketing thing, right? No, 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 no. I, I marketing has been there of, before the jean business. So okay. one day, like, I, I, 
He said, like how, how did you transition from, from working, you know, for a company into now working for yourself? Working for myself. Yeah. Like, that, 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 I know you own that, a number of companies. Yeah, that is the part I'm, I'm getting to now. So he challenged okay. me one night. He said, what do you always do back at the office? After every, everybody's always rushing to leave, but you, you will sit down and you are always the one locking the office. What do you stay back for? And I told him, Okay, I know I know how to do this. I can do this, and I just try to use the office resources because I know the office whole we staff to that. We office. I I I I I I know that law since that your work should be responsible to adding value to your life. If you want to build something, you want to better yourself. Of course, your office should be able to help assist with that. So I use the resources at the office just to be able to work a little before going to my village because I was staying at Papi. You know now. Wow. So I think that that's the end. Like, <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you're the UK, just just so that's the end, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's the end, bro. So so it, it, it was like, whoa, really? You know how to do all of these things? Then he asked this Leban, Lebanese friend who wanted to design a website back then. And it was like, I have a staff that said he can do this. Let him do it for you. He invited me into his office. The man spoke with me. I asked him, What do you want? I got I, I, I was able to get his brief. Then I designed the website for free. I did everything for free. I submitted it. Then after like two weeks, my boss just called me into the office and he handed me money in, a, in an envelope. I was like, what's this money for? He said, remember that Lebanese guy you built a website for? He said, I should give you this. I counted that money. It was 350000 If that man has asked me that how much are you going to build that website? My money then was under k Wow. It gave me three fifty thousand. One that you asked for. Yeah. <laughs> so after a few days, after a few days, I was in my boss' office. You know, as usual. Then after the visitor left, he told me to wait back in the office. And he, you know, he started asking me. He said, "Do you know that before you succeed as a as a, dig, as a quantity of your you will have to practice for at least 10 years. I said, yes. I said that, but this thing you already know how to do. Why don't you build on it? I said, ah, I, I, I am building on it, but I need to work. You know, it was a mentality. You know, that slave mentality of education that a school puts in your head. This is I school had teaches that you mentality. to work for other people. Yeah, <laughs> I had that yourself. mentality. So it, it, it gave me a huge benefit he said you know what i want you to go start something for yourself after three months if you are not happy with what you're doing come back and resume your work do you get and that was a shift and that was a shift you're calling now do you know the crazy part do you know the crazy part i was making average of 300k every month from my business, whereas I was being paid sixty thousand for the job I was doing. Wow! Just, just to give that context, I, just I to give that context, what well, what can sixty thousand naira buy, <laughs> or what could it yeah. buy at that time? No, of course, yeah. I was able to pay my rent. My rent was one twenty k per year, and every month I spent about thirty five thousand naira on feeding and everything, you know, bachelor's life now. The only food I love to eat then was beans and indomie. Beans, indomie, beans, indomie, beans, indomie. Imagine. I made it with gari sometimes. Yeah, so <laughs> indomie and egg, beans and gari, beans and no gari. I what love I like. beans, I love, you know. So, and from there, you know, that time, within a year, I saved eight millionaire. That year, that year I stopped working. Eight million naira. I had eight million. I, I I don't even know what to use the money for, because I was still living at Papi, still paying one twenty k per month. You were year. stacking up your cash. <laughs> yes, yeah, cash was just piling up. Once in a week, I go to Jabi Lake Mall to eat. Nothing more. I kept working. You know, you know when you are not when you are not going to work. I think that was this. That is still the same habit that is still in me till today. I wake up like this. Big. I don't brush my teeth. The first thing I start is work. I just pick up my phone, pick my laptop, and I'm, I start making money as early as 6 a.m. in the morning. Work, 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 work. 
the old, now you know my wife will say oh we should travel we should go on vacation oh yeah well, let's go here let's go it's not that i'm beginning to spend money on oh now i also have a baby i spend quality time with my baby and all but and that life. was how i started my business so and you, I, you do the digital marketing thing right the, yeah how, how did you know then, then i wanted then i wanted i wanted something I wanted to sell a product. I wanted to have a product. That was why I chose jean business. I, I did my research. I said, okay, I want to do fashion, but I don't want to do everyday fashion. What is that part of dressing that people cannot get enough of? Everybody wears jeans. And that's how I was able to, I, I chose I chose jean business and I, that was it. And it be, and I think at some point you you had to sell the business, right? Yeah, I sold the business before relocating out of Nigeria. Even though I'm planning to start the business again, but I want to I want to have my own brand now. Like I want to have my own gym brand. Okay, interesting. So so quickly, I'm going to ask you um a two prompt uh, question, right? I uh, I see something on your social media, right? It's called the billionaire mindset, and you know sometimes when I'm talking about you with my brother, and then it's like, oh, how is that with James? I'm like the man with the billionaire mindset, and then you know, uh, um, just to give you a, a, a little bit of context, you know, myself, I do believe a lot in you, and um, my brother also appreciates you as well. So he says something, he says. People might be laughing at that guy, right? But then he's been saying this is his OED is, and he's going to be a billionaire in right in your faces. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you need to conceive it. So I, I have what I like to say a lot, conceive, believe, achieve, right? So you've conceived mm-hmm. it, I you believe it a lot, and, you know, you're achieving it as well. And I don't know, I don't want to put it in harm's way, but I think you're probably a billionaire in Naira already because it's <laughs> exaggerated. <laughs> actually, <laughs> that, was, that, that was a time. <laughs> well, I like that, to see that, you that was a, a billionaire in, in, um, in pounds, right? So yeah, back it, it to my question, happen. Right? It will happen. You know, yeah. billionaire mindset, I, I like to think that is, you know, one of your philosophies, right, of life. And, you know, how did you come about billionaire mindset and what are your key philosophies, you know, that drive you in life and in business? Okay, um, well, billionaire mindset came from my earning power. I discovered two things about money. The people that chose to dig well, do you think that that was what their destiny is? <laughs> no, we, we all are architects of our destinies to a very large extent. I, I, I discovered that. My, my father actually taught me this. My father is actually my mentor now. The higher you go, the cooler. So if you, if you want to become a billionaire, why do you want to sell a product that you're going to see just two pound from? Do you know how many two pound profits you have to make? Pay your tax, feed your family, take care of yourself, build the business before you can become a billionaire? A lot. So I, 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 I discovered two things. Number one, whatever thing I want to do, I should do it like a very rich person. And number two, whatever thing I want to do, it must be something that serves people that are hungry for success hungry for success so mm-hmm. my healing power gave me that mindset that was the time um yeah we, we we got to a time that in a day we make like a million plus every day every day every day every day and i told myself i said this week i've made like nine million Last week, I made like 7 million. The coming week, I, I was able to project what I was making every week. And I was like, if I continue like this, if I continue like this, I, I know for sure what I, I, I would want, right? Of course, right? right? And so you, you can project. 
yeah, I, I, I can predict and project and be like, okay, if, if, if I do not fall below 6 million every week in a month, I've raised over 20 million. So I started seeing myself as what I am not yet. So achieve, the places I go believe, to, achieve. Yes. <laughs> you, you, need to, you, need to, you need to put it on your social media, yeah. right? And tell them it's for me. Tell them it's for King Dames. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I go to places that are designed for the rich, for the exclusive. I join groups that that wealthy groups. I started hanging out with wealthy people. I dress extremely well my suits they're all you know bespoke i don't buy ready-made suits bespoke suits they fly them in from lagos not through god is good or one boss my suit is ready they send it their flight and i pay 90k for the logistic bringing it into uh, abuja so you know just that our lifestyle here plus my education does not allow this thing, but I am going to resume that very soon. Even though none of my suits fits me anymore because I've had it weight, <laughs> of course. So, but I, I intend resuming that lifestyle again. I started this thing that uh, what's his name? Does uh, Gary V. I go out, they, they make my videos everywhere I go to, they recorded. I talk to people, I visit some of my high paying clients. I talk to them on camera, you know, and all. So all of these things helped me a whole lot. Because, you know, when people see me with some calibers of people, they'll be like, whoa, I know this woman. So this guy is doing something for this woman. Ah, I must do something with this guy too. Interesting. Your association gets wrong. Yeah. I, I have some clients that, I don't post on social media because the, the other day, Obi Kubana, one of his closest pal, is my client. We talk, if, if I post something, we comment on it on status. You know, I, I, I have this kind of people. And I'd be like, there was a time I posted my on my birthday a picture and someone was like, uh, do you know this person? I said, oh, he's my client. He said, it's a lie. And I ask him. And that same day he came back, he said, Whoa, now we need to work. Eh, so you 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 are using me to play before when you came to make an inquiry, I saved my number. So, so why is it that people tend to doubt people, especially it, it, it's, it's not doubt. People, where we come from? It, no, it's not doubt. That is why the power of networking is important. There's some people that has gotten customers because they are associated with me. Mm. That's, that's just networking where you feel like, okay, this person's value is rubbing off on this person. There are some people that has held you in high esteem. Now, if someone is talking and the person mentions your name, they, they may not even let the person know that they know you. They'll be like, hmm, this, this, this baby knows Mr. Demola. Really? Ah, the way he, she's talking, since they are kind of close, they'll bring her closer. Just because they're like, we have mad respect for Mr. Ademola. Before that, one more question left for you, right? So we've spoken about um billionaire mindset, right? Uh, that is your philosophies, the just the key ones that you think have actually like helped you in life and business. What 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 key philosophy would you say has actually like been a backbone for your success? Number one, integrity, and number two, don't be normal. Normal is boring. Normal is boring. I used to tell people something. It's not that I'm just learning how to speak English much more. I've, I've not even perfected my English. And what I control, the person that speaks the best English in Nigeria cannot dream of getting it. <laughs> yeah. <Don't be> <laughs> Yeah, it's not about your spoken English or how uh, your your the school you've attended or no. Don't be normal. You want something, be like a beast. Be like the matador. You should be unstoppable. 
be mad for that thing, be extremely obsessed with what you're trying to achieve. You see this podcast thing you're doing right now? If you are extremely obsessed with it and you are gunning for knowledge every day as you're pushing, in two years' time, in four years' time, People will be talking about you, and me, Mister Fixer, will be listening and be like, "I know we definitely talk about you." Mark the words of Mister Fixer on the G- very G- 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 of King James podcast. <laughs> Mark the words of Mister Fixer. Mister so, Fixer so, uh, he said he here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it, it's about you know integrity. Number one, that really helped me. It's been how many years? 28, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Sorry, so, uh, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Six years. In my six years of, of running my business, I've not had a single case of uh, uh, he scammed me, he duped me, he dissed me, he dissed that. Integrity. My yes is my yes. My no is my no. If I flopped, I will apologize. If I delay, I will apologize. I under promise, I over deliver. I'm that kind of person. I don't overpromise people. And that in itself is, is not really good because some people want you to say everything, you know, sweet talk them, convince them so that they will pay you. Well, I'm not that kind of person. I'll tell you this how it is, this how it is. Let's do it this way, let's do it that way. And if you choose to work with me, at the end of the day, you'll be mesmer- mesmerized. You'll be like, wow, thank you for helping me. So, and also another thing that I have, that I have always been following is if you provide something people need, if you are able to get or bring to the table what people need, people will get it from you. Hmm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If you are yeah, able to that provide... Has, that speaks to what, what, what I, I said earlier. Um, where we're speaking, right? You don't sell what you want to sell. You sell what yeah. the market wants to what, buy. What the market wants you to, you know. You. So if you're able to bring to the table what people want from you, you will definitely sell. So that's it. Interesting. So our last uh, question to you is uh, what... It's, it, this is not really a question, but let, let, let's just put it, right? It's um, on the script. So uh, what's your advice to um, the younger generation, the up and coming, you know, people who are looking up to you? And would I say looking up to myself as well? Like looking up to us, right? You know, uh, to a very large extent, they want to be successful. They, they want to become something in life. But then they need that, you know, that ginger. They need that inspiration. They need hope, right? So, what would be your advice to people who are up and coming? Well, um, people need to understand that there is no uh, overnight success, mm. and also people need to learn patience. A lot of people are not patient. They Social media has given the wrong perception of what success truly means. When they, the see, <laughs> they see all the good, they see all the good stuff out there, and they assume, okay, once you do this, money will come. No, some say drop shipping. Oh, I'll, I'll make millions. It's a lie. Anything that will give you success will take time, and I'm talking about two three, four years, so, uh, you know, time frame. So my advice is people should learn how to be more patient. People should also learn how to serve. If you cannot serve on that someone without expecting anything, don't expect that you grow and someone will also serve you. If you don't serve someone, nobody will serve you. Yeah, because good, good leaders are actually good servants, right? Yes, yes. So that is my advice, per se. And to just to round it up, uh, people should also learn how to plan long term. Study research has even shown that when you plan long term, you tend to achieve your goal earlier or sooner compared to when you're just planning for my next day I should succeed. 
one to two years is short term. Mid term is five years. Long term is starting from 10 years. So if you plan something that, oh, this company in 10 years, we should be able to get to X, Y, Z. You can achieve that thing in four years. Truth be told. So people should learn how to plan long term. Thank you very much. Interesting. Thank you very much for your time. And we have a tradition on the pod, right? Where, whereby the guest, um, the current guest, leaves a question for the next guest, right? So what would your question be to the next uh, person who's going to come on board? So I'm going to take that down. So we'll ask that uh, next person. So what question, any question on your mind to just give the person to answer? If you're given the power to lead, how will you change the world around you? If you are given the power to lead, <laughs> how would you change how the world? How will you change the world around you? Wow. Well said by Mr. Fixer. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate okay. you. And of course, I am very sure that um, our audience appreciates you. We, You're welcome. We're out. <laughs> Bless up, everyone. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>